there, wonderful Astro person. Welcome back to the Astro Film channel and thanks for tuning in. Some of my followers on YouTube, like Martin, hi Martin, <laughs> they asked me to review my Celestron Edge HD 8 inch telescope after having owned and used it for about six months. So in this video, I will get into the main reasons why I bought the telescope and I will share my user experiences. And I will of course also show you some astro pictures I was able to take with this telescope over the past months. And I will end with answering that famous question, would I buy this telescope again? So let's dive right in. So this is my telescope surface F6 photo line apochromatic refractor, which I use for wider field astrophotography with great satisfaction, I have to add. However, <laughs> I developed this craving, which is known among astrophotographers as aperture fever. And it actually refers to the wish to zoom in and photograph some of these awesome smaller objects that are in space, such as planets, galaxies, globular clusters, or distant nebulas. Was it actually worthwhile to get a telescope with a longer focal length? Well, I think so, and I will show you a couple of examples here. So, the first deep sky picture I took with the HHD at its native full focal length was the core of the Orion Nebula, and I didn't use any filters. Actually, I was really happy with this first result, this first picture. You can clearly see the trapezium stars at the core of the Orion Nebula, but also some of the newborn stars around the trapezium, which actually I was unable to resolve using my 80mm lens based uh, apochromatic refractor. Now here is a second example. This is a wide field picture taken with my lens based refractor telescope of the Horsehead and the Flame Nebula. And in general, I really like these wide field pictures, but when I zoom in on the Horsehead for instance, or the Flame Nebula, you can see that the picture gets somewhat blocky and because yeah, I have a shorter focal length and a smaller aperture with that telescope. So this is a picture of the Horsehead Nebula in H alpha and RGB color, uh, about two hours of data taken with the Edge HD. And you can clearly see that the resolution of the picture is better with the Edge HD. A final example I have for you is M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. Now, I took about four hours of RGB color data with my apochromatic telescope back in 2020 and about the same four hours of data with my Edge HD in 2021. And again, yeah, you clearly can see that the picture taken with the Edge HD picture uh, with the Edge HD telescope is smoother and it contains more details, especially I would say in the spiral arms of the Whirlpool Galaxy as compared to my refracted telescope. So my second reason for choosing the Edge HD was that yeah, the Edge HD, unlike a normal smith cassegrain telescope, it produces aberration free flat field images out of the box. And what does this actually mean? Now, well, the Edge HD is a smart iteration of a normal Smith Cassegrain design. Uh, one of the main issues with a regular Smith Cassegrain telescope is that the spherical mirrors in those telescopes they often lead to off axis coma and field curvature, which practically means you will end up with oval stars at the edges of your field of view when you're trying to photograph objects in space. So the Edge HD, it is based on this classical Smith Cassegrain telescope design, but it has two additional internal lenses placed very close to the primary mirror to do the job of correcting for off axis coma and field curvature found in conventional Smith Cassegrain telescopes. So did the Edge HD provide those nice flat field images all the way towards the edges of my pictures? So before I'll show you some of my pictures, you need to know that, yeah, getting nice round stars, it doesn't only depend on good quality optics in your scope. It also depends on how accurately you are able to track objects in the night sky. And in turn, that depends on how well your telescope mount is polar aligned, the weather conditions, how well your mount is balanced, and the guiding equipment you use. So in my case, I use the EQ6R Pro mount, which I always polar align using sharp cap. And I do have to mention that I'm currently still using a pretty small 162 millimeter focal length guide scope to guide my Edge HD. So this being said, here are some of my single exposure pictures where my tracking was pretty good. And yeah, as you can see, the stars are nice and round also towards the edges of my picture. So I was pretty happy with these results actually. 
So the third reason why I bought the Edge HD is that the Edge HD it can be turned into a multi-purpose telescope with some additional aftermarket add-ons. So the Edge HD has a native focal length of 2030 millimeters and an aperture of 200 millimeters or 8 inches and this makes it into an f10 ratio telescope. Now if you want to get into planetary imaging you can buy an additional 2 times or 3 times barrel lens which effectively increases your focal length to about 4000 mm or even 6000 mm. And at that focal length you can easily spot surface details on planets like Jupiter or Mars and you can get decent pictures of our inner planets Venus and Mercury. Now the native F10 ratio on the Edge HD is a bit slow to also engage in deep sky astrophotography. And this is why the Celestron offers you an optional 0.7 reducer which you can buy in combination with your Edge HD. And the 0.7 reducer brings your focal ratio down to F7. And this considerably decreases the exposure time you need to collect fainter light from deep space. So if you really want a fast wide field telescope, you can also pair your Edge HD with a Hyperstar for about $1000 or €1200. So this is definitely not a cheap investment and yeah, Mrs. Astroform would probably kill me. So I didn't buy the Hyperstar yet. And if you do, you'll be getting a very fast telescope. So was I actually able to use the Edge HD as a multi-purpose telescope? I don't have the Hyperstar yet, so I cannot comment on that particular part, but let's start with planets. So I have to say that I bought the Edge HD in October 2020, when most of the planets they were already past their opposition. And at this point in time, I'm actually more of a deep sky photographer than a moon and planetary imager. So this being said, I spent one of the first nights under pretty bad seeing conditions, where I tried to capture the planets and the moon. And yeah, we had some wind gusts, so this is probably not a really representative of what you can achieve with the Edge HD. But let me show you some live videos I captured of the planets with a 2.5 viral lens. So you're looking at a 5000 mm focal length video here. And also, yeah, you can see some pictures here I took of the surface of the moon. So as far as using the Edge HD for deep sky, I already showed you some of my, my nebula pictures and my galaxy pictures. And I was able to take uh, those pictures with my 0.7 reducer. So based on those pictures, I can only say that, yeah, I'm pretty satisfied and I can totally recommend the Edge HD being capable uh, of capturing galaxies and some of the smaller objects in the night sky. So let me also show you some of my final deep sky narrowband pictures I took with the Edge HD. The first one is the Flaming Star Nebula and the second one is the Monkey Head Nebula. Both pictures, they are based on about eight hours of data using HA, S2 and O3 filters in the Hubble palette uh, with a five minute exposures for each of the pictures. So let me finally also share some user experiences on the ease of use of the Edge HD. And I can only say <laughs> that the Edge HD, it is a very easy to use telescope. It came collimated out of the box, so that was pretty nice. And the telescope, it is a short and lightweight telescope, which makes it very easy to carry around and to set up the telescope on your telescope mount. And like I mentioned before, it's very easy to store the telescope inside your house. It doesn't take a lot of space. So I'm only very positive about yeah, the ease of use with the Edge HD here. So if you would ask me the final question, like after having used the telescope for about six months, would I recommend it? My answer would be a resounding yes, actually. Uh, I had so much fun with the Edge HD capturing some of the smaller objects in space. So yeah, I hope I gave you some useful information here about the Edge HD 8 inch. Uh, I hope it helps to make up your my mind. Uh, if you found the information useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel if you like astrophotography like me. Um, I hope to see you again in one of my other videos, of course. And until then, I want to wish you clear skies. Bye bye.